Invasion of the Animal People is a 1959 sci-fi horror film that's about what you would expect for the time. This is the type of movie you see playing on your local TV station at 1am. In fact, that's how I first saw it. But that was a while ago, so let's dive right in and see if it's worth a rewatch. It starts out with John Carradine as the narrator. He does a good job as you would expect. He's talking about how big space is and how hopefully one day we humans can explore its deepest reaches. Remember, this movie came out the same year NASA did, so space was a pretty wild area. Heck, it still is. First we're introduced to Diane. She claims to have heard a loud sound, but no one else heard it. So the doctors say she's mentally ill. Really, they even put it in the paper as news. What kind of small town is this where news is a local woman hearing things? So much for doctor-patient confidentiality. Well, they say she makes a full recovery and plans on taking a trip to Switzerland. Again, big news. Once there, she meets with her uncle and Eric. They're all part of a small team sent there to investigate a meteor that fell. But we all know better. That's no meteor. Diane and Eric end up hitting it off, and she joins them for their expedition. Along the way, they find a ton of dead animals and large footprints, putting the creature at 20 foot tall at least. Well then, it should be easy to find. As the team gets closer to the crash site, they realize that this isn't just a meteor, and this is all just a little bit more complicated than they thought. All this while the aliens are just watching them from the inside of their ship. Suddenly, the team hears gunshots. They rush back to the plane, only to find it destroyed by the monster. Diane and Eric split up from the group to see if they can find the beast. Well, wouldn't you know it, they get lost. But luck is on their side. They find a cabin and take refuge there for the night. Maybe they're not so lucky because the creature attacks the cabin. It looks kind of like a dopey yeti with fangs. I don't know about this one. I like the look of it, for the 50s at least. You can tell they tried doing things like filming it low to make it look big and using miniatures when needed, but there are times the creature's carrying Diane and yeah. You can tell this thing isn't 20 feet tall. So yeah, this thing kidnaps Diane and the rest of the movie is basically them hunting down the creature. The locals join in as they all attack the monster. You're meant to feel bad for it. I mean, it didn't really hurt Diane, but it did destroy the cabin, so <laughs> I guess it's gotta die. They throw their torches at it and light it on fire. Then the monster falls over a cliff and they all celebrate as the aliens hightail it out of there. So, that was Invasion of the Animal People. I'm not quite sure I would call that an invasion. A small Swedish town where a couple animals die and a cabin gets knocked over? Maybe they should have called it the slight inconvenience of the animal people. But then, who were the animal people? The monster? I think of that as more of the alien's pet. And the aliens certainly didn't look like animals. Well, it's not worth thinking too much into it. It was just meant to be a cheap 50s drive-in horror movie. And if you look at it like that, it's okay. The music was good, the actors are likable enough, it's just the plot is almost non-existent. I do like the monster. Sure, it's goofy looking, but that's kind of why I like it. Watch Invasion of the Animal People when you want to catch a late night horror movie on TV, but certainly don't pay money for it. I give it two giant big fanged monsters out of four.